Greetings everybody, John Tyre here, and this is a pretty good run, I would say, of the brand new Arena Horde mode in Assassin's Creed Origins. I'm playing on hard difficulty, and I made it to about wave 13, I believe. Um, took me about 12 minutes or so to get that far, and it ended up being quite a bit more challenging than I'd expected. The first waves, as with any Horde mode, end up being... They're, you know, they weren't easy, but they weren't hard. They, you know, when you, uh, so after every wave, you completely regenerate all your health, which makes it significantly easier than uh, it could have been. And a big change in this horde mode compared to uh, the traditional gladiator arena modes is that you actually bring in your gear from the outside, your whatever you have equipped is what you bring in. So I highly recommend using a weapon that has health on kill and not health on hit. Health on kill gives 15% of your health back every time you get a kill. And health on hit, <coughs> excuse me, health on hit gives 1%. So for the Trials of the Gods, when you were doing tons and tons of hits to the god, and not getting any kills, health on hit made more sense. Um, you do regenerate, or like, like I was saying, after every wave, you get all of your health back, but it's still, uh, I think I made it quite a bit further than I would have without the health on kill. Um, so the horde mode, to start it, you go to uh, Cyrene, which is in the northeast of the Assassin's Creed Origins map. And you just go to the Gladiator Arena like you're doing any old challenge, and there's just a new menu option there. Their blog post said that there is supposed to be a new mission, uh, a new quest called Here Comes a New Challenger. And it's supposed to introduce Thanasis, a Gladiator Master whose best fighters have gone missing. That never showed up for me. I, I, I This was just one of the, the options in the Gladiator Arena for me, so I don't know if that's a glitch or what. It seems like they've had... Uh, some issues with certain quests popping and rewards popping for their DLC items. Or not, not DLC, I shouldn't say DLC because this is not paid. Um, but with the Trials of the Gods, there were issues initially that they eventually fixed. But anyway, oh, okay, so the, the animals first start coming out at wave 4. And this arena just becomes... In addition to more uh, deadly enemies, the arena and the extra challenges they throw at you become more deadly the further you get on with these waves. Um, so at, I think about wave 10 is when the enemies actually will out-level you. And that's when it becomes really, really dangerous and you need to play very defensively to avoid taking any hits whatsoever. Because I ended up dying, I ended up getting like two shot basically, <laughs> and I just didn't have enough time uh, or opportunities to regenerate any health uh, on, on the wave 12 or 13 where I died. Um, so I'm on hard difficulty, and actually with this patch, they added quite a few things. Uh, they, the map overlay has had a couple visual tweaks where it, it, it makes it more clear what hideouts you've actually completed. They're... Um, they have a gold layout or a gold like border on the ones that you've com on on the challenges that you've actually completed. Oh, I want to talk a little bit of strategy for a second before I start talking more about the, this new patch. They um, use the animals to your advantage. Avoid killing them as much as possible. The next wave will start with all of the hyenas or leopards or lions whatever enemies are running around or animals I should say are running around and then though they will draw the focus of those other enemies uh, the human enemies that are trying to kill you so use them to your advantage if you can you can usually outrun them it's mm, the leopards are probably the hardest ones to outrun because they have that jumping attack but uh, the lions and the hyenas that come later are relatively easy to just run away from. Fortunately, you don't get to use any of your bows and arrows in the arena. Oh, and hey, there we go. Now we see the, the booby traps that are spinning now. I don't know if that actually does more damage. Like, why would a spinning booby trap do more damage than just spikes that are just sitting there? 
I mean, I guess they could thresh you a little bit, but eh, whatever. Anyway, uh, they change over time. I actually never got to a wave where the fire traps start spitting fire, which I thought was kind of interesting. I wonder what wave those start popping out at. Okay, so other updates with this patch. They added with zero notes whatsoever. I, I learned this because after recording this video, one of the tool tips, one of the new tool tips was change your difficulty to nightmare mode. Or night, uh, change difficulty to nightmare difficulty if you're looking for an extra challenge. And also in the settings is the new option for enemy scaling. So if you're waiting for those and waiting for some sort of blog post, just they're live now. Uh, the, the, the new blog post that came out today said nothing about that. And I wonder how much harder this would have been on Nightmare Difficulty, <laughs> now that I think about it. Uh, the, it man, once you get to level or, or wave 10 and the enemies are level 40, uh, it becomes pretty ridiculously tough. So the armor that I'm using is the armor that you get from completing all of the tombs. And actually, it, it was glitched for me for quite a while. The final tomb that costs, I think, 50 silica? I, I went in there the first time. It's, it's the one that's at the base of the Great Sphinx, or within the Great Sphinx, I should say. And I, I went in there and I didn't have enough silica to actually open it. So I said, okay, I'll just come back later. I just gotta remember that this is the one that I haven't done yet. When I came back, the big map that was, that you interact with to like lift and go underneath even further into the Great Sphinx, it was glitched and I couldn't interact with it a second time. And I wasn't able to complete this challenge for a long time. And so yeah, the sword that I'm using uh, has a combo multiplier which ends up being pretty freaking helpful for the enemies that are over my level because <laughs> you get to the point where your adrenaline attack does not actually kill enemies with uh, this sword, it's especially, well, the the heaviest of enemies and even like kind of some of the mid-tier enemies when they're level 42, you can't kill them with just an adrenaline attack. And I think I neglected to, uh, I, I have the Head Splitter Axe, which is the heaviest damage weapon in the game, uh, as far as I know, to, um, which, w which would have done more damage especially on those adrenaline attacks, those overpower attacks. But I was just so like overwhelmed by what was going on and just trying to survive when I got to the very end of this that I neglected to change and use that weapon instead. All right, a little story time, I guess, now. Uh, in other Ubisoft-related news, I am going to a Far Cry 5 preview event. Tomorrow, I'm. I live in Denver. I'm flying out to San Francisco for this preview event, and I, you know, I've I've actually played a little bit of Far Cry Five already, and it is it feels very similar to Far Cry Four. Far Cry Primal. I, I've really enjoyed all the Far Cry games except for two. I know that was a, like that's kind of like an indie hit that a lot of people loved, but I did not love that game. Uh, Far Cry One, and then. Crisis, I guess, is what that technically evolved into, or because that was the studio that did that. But um, actually, is that how that worked? I can't remember. Anyway, Far Cry three and four, I absolutely loved. Far Cry Primal was a huge disappointment. Far Cry five feels much more like Far Cry three and four. It seems much more story heavy than the last, uh, than three and four, and much more. Um, Well, I love the Montana setting, and just the, the America setting should be really fun, but I guess what I'm trying to get to is if you have any, uh, if you're interested in Far Cry 5, let me know in the comments what you're interested in seeing. There's not a ton of information about the game out there yet. Uh, typically, these preview events, I, I get to play for about three hours, and they uh, I think the embargo is Friday the 15th, so I'll be able to post videos pretty quickly of of that game. I usually try to do things like 
uh, record the all the different skills and uh, list those out for people that want to like plan their skills ahead of time. And usually they don't let you show the map. That's one of their stipulations, I guess. Uh, they, they they usually have rules about what parts of the story I can show as well. So I usually like from these preview events, I usually try to avoid showing any story whatsoever, just because. If you're interested in the game, and you're interested in the story, you probably don't want to see any of it. I don't want to, you know, I've been avoiding as many Star Wars trailers as humanly possible. <laughs> going, uh, except they show, like, non-stop these days. During football. Like, every, every commercial break. Alright, here's a good drinking game. Every commercial break, anytime there is a Star Wars related commercial, whether it's like Nissan with their co-marketing efforts for Star Wars, or it's, uh, oh God, what other companies are doing co-marketing stuff with Star Wars? Probably some food brands, and there's obviously tons of trailers. Um, take a drink. <laughs> You'll be shit-faced by the end of the, of the football game. Anyway. Uh, thanks for checking this video out. I don't really have much more to say, so I'm going to say my horse voice so I can do some more Far Cry voiceovers when I get home. And again, if you have any questions about what, uh, you know, specific things that you want to see in Far Cry, let me know. Thanks for watching, and game on. What the?